Hello, it's Len from Straight Talk from the Homeland. I'm speaking to you today from Queensland, Australia, during Christmas time, a time where we should be speaking of great joy in families. But uh, unfortunately, our thoughts are with the people of Armenia at this time, and uh, also the unfolding genocide in uh, Gaza. During 2023, I have come to understand that the so-called rules-based order, uh, which came post-World War II, given the structures of the United Nations, have collapsed. We see with our own eyes that the United Nations Security Council is a useless tool to prevent the worst tragedies it's useless because it's actually designed to fail with any of our five permanent members being able to veto what any reasonable human being would see as sensible it's never going to be a fit for purpose and speaking of those five permanent members of those the so-called civilized world looks to the United States for leadership, but it sees none. It appears that the president, Joe Biden, many of whom are calling genocide Joe, is absent. It seems that the Secretary of State, Lincoln, of Jewish background, is running the show. And therefore, it's no surprise, really, that the State Department's new ambassador to Armenia would utter the words that she thought it was okay for uh, indigenous Christians from uh, former Nagorno-Karabakh, or Artsakh, as we call it, to be part of a genocidal state called Azerbaijan, which has a human rights rating similar to North Korea. Further, Azerbaijan is known to have a state-sponsored racist program teaching children to hate Armenians. So there was no hope of this. But the United States decided that this was okay. And why? Well, because Israel says it's okay. Israel puts its operatives in Azerbaijan so it can threaten the neighboring country, Iran. So. Armenians are pawns again, just like they were after Woodrow Wilson's arbitral award in uh, the 1920s. It seems to me that the situation that's going on in Gaza could have been avoided if the United States had done what it says it always does, and that's to defend human rights as a priority. It defended Zionist rights. It supplied Israel with weapons to continue their slaughter, their disproportionate response to the terrorist attack by Hamas. Yes, nobody in their right mind would condone the terrorist attack by Hamas. But equally, no one will condone a disproportionate response and Israel needs to understand that the world can see your ethnic cleansing uh, desires, your plans to expel, to deport uh, 2.3 million Palestinians from their homeland. Does this sound familiar? Yes, it's just the same as Israel's friend and ally Azerbaijan did to the people of Artsakh. So they saw the United States did nothing. They saw the world basically did nothing and shrugged their shoulders. So I guess Israel decided it was going to do the same and get away with it. And it hasn't worked out like that. You know, I'm really ashamed of the West. I've said it many times. I don't understand how they think the world can move forward into a peaceful, prosperous place if it keeps... Uh, being very selective about human rights. 
talking about China's uh, human rights abuse, but at the same time ignoring Israel's, or for that matter, Azerbaijan's. We live on a small uh, planet, hurtling through space. We are, as far as we're aware, the only intelligent life in the universe. We are completely vulnerable, and yet we're killing ourselves. After millennia of getting to this point, we see nothing but carnage. And so in 2024, I really hope that this pivotal year doesn't mean that we're going to lurch into further sort of conflict in places like South China Sea or India-Pakistan, for example. I really hope that this is a wake-up call to everybody. That the United States sanctions Azerbaijan. Uh, for the Azerbaijani's sake as well, we see the oppression within that country. The alley of dictatorship of more than 30 years has to end. The United States needs to admit its errors, as does the United Kingdom, the biggest economic investor in uh, Azerbaijan, and which is why the BBC is silent. Shameful. Which is why the British government is silent. Well, they're politicians. What do you expect? But I expect the British people to stand up for human rights more than they have. I expect the British government to recognise the Armenian genocide. That would be a good start. Meanwhile, countries like Turkey are busy bombing uh, Kurds uh, and pretending that uh, they're for human rights in Palestine. I wish for my New Year's, simply speaking, that the West stops being selective about whose human rights they protect and making sure that uh, everyone is treated equally. And I wish that the United Nations was reformed. The Security Council should be disbanded and reformed so that its highest body is not, I, not subject to veto because my former colleagues in the United Nations work very hard, most of them, but they cannot work within such a, an impossible political framework. Merry Christmas and hopefully a Happy New Year to all. This is Lynn from Straight Talk from the Homeland.